Yes, um, thank you very much for the invi invitation. I'm really uh, happy to be in Toronto. I have never been here before, and uh, I learned that it is, well, I learned this earlier, obviously, in my life, that it's a very important financial city, which is not near the coast, which is good news because the five uh, biggest financial cities on the planet are near the coast, and we are going to talk about sea level rise today. So um, that's just as a background information. There's nothing more boring than the global mean temperature for a climate scientist, uh, but I will have to talk about the global mean temperature uh, in the beginning a little bit, and I would like to provide you with some arguments that um, why we are so certain that the, global, that the carbon dioxide concentration, the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, together with the increase of methane and nitrous oxide, uh, is going to increase the temperature of the planet and why we don't really need climate models uh, for this kind of statement. But then we'll um, be finished with the boring background information and we'll talk about climate impacts. And I want to distinguish two classes of climate impacts. The uh, one class is really large scale and gradual changes in the climate system that include sea level rise, but also um, the, uh, the death of coral reefs and the thawing of permafrost. And then uh, I want to talk about a second class which we can say much less about because it's much more difficult from a physical or a statistics point of view to get a grab on this. And these are uh, weather extremes. I talk about these because I think society might be more vulnerable to uh, weather extremes than we are to, um, for example, sea level rise. And that's why I think we have to take them into account. I will, uh, you know, the, generally I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy that um, talks about doomsday and then uh, the other people come and talk about the solution. So I want to at least uh, leave today with a little bit of optimism, uh, focusing on the solution because we have the climate conference at the end of the year, which I think uh, will solve everything and then we'll have finished uh, the climate problem and we can move on to other problems that society is going to face in the future, or are going to face, is going to face in the future. But let's talk about climate science, and I hope that you can, uh, you know, whenever you don't understand something, please ask in between. I will have an opportunity to ask later on. And, and, and it's really important for me that you don't uh, hesitate even to ask questions that you might think are, um, you know, uh, too simple. Or um, obviously, you should also ask questions that um, would fall into the class of so-called climate deniers, um, meaning uh, people that that um, don't think that there is climate change or that it is not anthropogenic. I would be really happy if you would ask these kinds of questions if you have them, because I don't want you to leave here today with um, thinking that climate change, the climate change that we are experiencing at the moment and will be experiencing in the future is uh, not man-made. Climate change is going to shape our future. I talk to uh, business people a lot these days, much more than um, to environmentalists, for example. I almost stopped talking to P the Green Party in Germany simply because that there's no nothing more to talk about. Um, but um, more and more to, to business and, and industry simply because they want to know what's, uh, what's the climate change really about. And I will, I will, you know, in the course of this lecture also highlight that there are two ways in which climate change is going to affect our lives and our businesses in the future. One is obviously the climate change, the climate impacts themselves. The um, other being the change in the political environment. Europe has a carbon trading scheme, a scheme already for, for years. It doesn't really work, and we can talk about why it doesn't work. People think that uh, it, it doesn't work because the price is too low, and that is um, partly true. But uh, what is really the, uh, the idea of a carbon trading scheme is not so much to put burden on industry, but to change the strategy of companies for the future. And for that, it is not really important that the price is very high, a carbon price is very high, but that everyone is certain that the price will not vanish, that it will not go away, and that future strategies have to be directed towards a, 
less carbon intensive um, production. So Europe has a carbon trading scheme. China has just announced a few weeks ago, two weeks ago I think, that they are going to introduce a carbon trading scheme in 2017 and uh, I learned that Ontario is currently developing a carbon trading scheme. So um, on all scales um, carbon trading schemes are implemented and carbon taxes are discussed. This is the second way, uh, second um, way of how um, climate change is going to affect future life. 